April 15. Jonathan helps David. David now fled from Naoth in Ramah and found Jonathan. What have I done? he exclaimed. What is my crime? How have I offended your father that he is so determined to kill me? That's not true, Jonathan protested. You're not going to die. He always tells me everything he's going to do, even the little things. I know my father wouldn't hide something like this from me. It just isn't so. Then David took an oath before Jonathan and said, Your father knows perfectly well about our friendship, so he has said to himself, I won't tell Jonathan why should I hurt him. But I swear to you that I am only a step away from death. I swear it by the Lord and by your own soul. Tell me what I can do to help you. Jonathan exclaimed. David replied, Tomorrow we celebrate the New Moon Festival. I've always eaten with the king on this occasion, but tomorrow I'll hide in the field and stay there until the evening of the third day. If your father asks where I am, tell him I asked permission to go home to Bethlehem for an annual family sacrifice. If he says, Fine, you will know all is well. But if he is angry and loses his temper, you will know he is determined to kill me. Show me this loyalty as my sworn friend, for we made a solemn pact before the Lord. Or kill me yourself if I have sinned against your father, but please don't betray me to him. Never, Jonathan exclaimed. You know that if I had the slightest notion my father was planning to kill you, I would tell you at once. Then David asked, How will I know whether or not your father is angry? Come out to the field with me, Jonathan replied, and they went out there together. Then Jonathan told David, I promise by the Lord, the God of Israel, that by this time tomorrow, or the next day at the latest, I will talk to my father and let you know at once how he feels about you. If he speaks favorably about you, I will let you know. But if he is angry and wants you killed, may the Lord strike me and even kill me if I don't warn you so you can escape and live. May the Lord be with you as he used to be with my father. And may you treat me with the faithful love of the Lord as long as I live. But if I die, treat my family with this faithful love, even when the Lord destroys all your enemies from the face of the earth. So Jonathan made a solemn pact with David, saying, May the Lord destroy all your enemies. And Jonathan made David reaffirm his vow of friendship again, for Jonathan loved David as he loved himself. Then Jonathan said, Tomorrow we celebrate the new moon festival. You will be missed when your place at the table is empty. The day after tomorrow, toward evening, go to the place where you hid before and wait there by the stone pile. I will come out and shoot three arrows to the side of the stone pile as though I were shooting at a target. Then I will send a boy to bring the arrows back. If you hear me tell him, They're on this side. Then you will know, as surely as the Lord lives, that all is well and there is no trouble. But if I tell him, Go farther, the arrows are still ahead of you, then it will mean that you must leave immediately, for the Lord is sending you away. And may the Lord make us keep our promises to each other, for he has witnessed them. So David hid himself in the field, and when the new moon festival began, the king sat down to eat. He sat at his usual place against the wall, with Jonathan sitting opposite him, and Abner beside him. But David's place was empty. Saul didn't say anything about it that day, for he said to himself, Something must have made David ceremonially unclean. But when David's place was empty again the next day, Saul asked Jonathan, Why hasn't the son of Jesse been here for the meal, either yesterday or today? Jonathan replied, David earnestly asked me if he could go to Bethlehem. He said, Please let me go, for we are having a family sacrifice. My brother demanded that I be there, so please let me get away to see my brothers. That's why he isn't here at the king's table. Saul boiled with rage at Jonathan. You stupid son of a whore, he swore at him. Do you think I don't know that you want him to be king in your place, shaming yourself and your mother? As long as that son of Jesse is alive, you'll never be king. Now go and get him so I can kill him. But why should he be put to death? Jonathan asked his father. What has he done? Then Saul hurled his spear at Jonathan, intending to kill him. So at last Jonathan realized that his father was really determined to kill David. Jonathan left the table in fierce anger and refused to eat on that second day of the festival, for he was crushed by his father's shameful behavior toward David. The next morning, as agreed, Jonathan went out into the field and took a young boy with him to gather his arrows. Start running, he told the boy, so you can find the arrows as I shoot them. So the boy ran, and Jonathan shot an arrow beyond him. When the boy had almost reached the arrow, Jonathan shouted, The arrow is still ahead of you! Hurry! Hurry! Don't wait! 
so the boy quickly gathered up the arrows and ran back to his master. He, of course, suspected nothing. Only Jonathan and David understood the signal. Then Jonathan gave his bow and arrows to the boy and told him to take them back to town. As soon as the boy was gone, David came out from where he had been hiding near the stone pile. Then David bowed three times to Jonathan with his face to the ground. Both of them were in tears as they embraced each other and said goodbye, especially David. At last, Jonathan said to David, Go in peace, for we have sworn loyalty to each other in the Lord's name. The Lord is the witness of a bond between us and our children forever. Then David left, and Jonathan returned to the town. David Runs from Saul David went to the town of Nob to see Ahimelech the priest. Ahimelech trembled when he saw him. Why are you alone? he asked. Why is no one with you? The king has sent me on a private matter, David said. He told me not to tell anyone why I am here. I have told my men where to meet me later. Now, what is there to eat? Give me five loaves of bread or anything else you have. We don't have any regular bread, the priest replied, but there is the holy bread, which you can have if your young men have not slept with any women recently. Don't worry, David replied. I never allow my men to be with women when they are on a campaign, and since they stay clean even on ordinary trips, how much more on this one? Since there was no other food available, the priest gave him the holy bread, the bread of the presence that was placed before the Lord in the tabernacle. It had just been replaced that day with fresh bread. Now Doeg the Edomite, Saul's chief herdsman, was there that day, having been detained before the Lord. David asked Ahimelech, Do you have a spear or sword? The king's business was so urgent that I didn't even have time to grab a weapon. I only have the sword of Goliath, the Philistine, whom you killed in the valley of Elah, the priest replied. It is wrapped in a cloth behind the ephod. Take that if you want it, for there is nothing else here. There is nothing like it, David replied. Give it to me. So David escaped from Saul and went to King Achish of Gath. But the officers of Achish were unhappy about his being there. Isn't this David, the king of the land? they asked. Isn't he the one the people honor with dances, singing Saul has killed his thousands and David his ten thousands? David heard these comments and was very afraid of what King Achish of Gath might do to him. So he pretended to be insane, scratching on doors and drooling down his beard. Finally, King Achish said to his men, Must you bring me a madman? We already have enough of them around here. Why should I let someone like this be my guest? Psalm 34 I will praise the Lord at all times. I will constantly speak His praises. I will boast only in the Lord. Let all who are helpless take heart. Come, let us tell of the Lord's greatness. Let us exalt His name together. I prayed to the Lord, and He answered me. He freed me from all my fears. Those who look to him for help will be radiant with joy. No shadow of shame will darken their faces. In my desperation I prayed, and the Lord listened. He saved me from all my troubles. For the angel of the Lord is a guard. He surrounds and defends all who fear him. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, the joys of those who take refuge in him. Fear the Lord, you his godly people, for those who fear him will have all they need. Even strong young lions sometimes go hungry, but those who trust in the Lord will lack no good thing. Come, my children, and listen to me, and I will teach you to fear the Lord. Does anyone want to live a life that is long and prosperous? Then keep your tongue from speaking evil and your lips from telling lies. Turn away from evil and do good. Search for peace and work to maintain it. The eyes of the Lord watch over those who do right. His ears are open to their cries for help. But the Lord turns his face against those who do evil. He will erase their memory from the earth. The Lord hears His people when they call to Him for help. He rescues them from all their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He rescues those whose spirits are crushed. The righteous person faces many troubles, but the Lord comes to the rescue each time. For the Lord protects the bones of the righteous. Not one of them is broken. Calamity will surely overtake the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be punished. But the Lord will redeem those who serve Him. No one who takes refuge in Him will be condemned.